call to order the February 24, 2015 meeting of the Oshkosh Common Council. And I want to welcome those of you that are here in the council chambers tonight to the council chamber. I also want to welcome those who might be watching us on, on Channel 10, those who might be watching on their computers, those who might be listening on their computers, or those who might be listening on the radio. This is your city government, and we do want you to take advantage of participating in any way that, that, that feels good to you. So welcome to all. I think before we actually get started with kind of the business part of the meeting, I'm going to ask the city manager to introduce a, a new city employee to us. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Alexa Najunas. Uh, Alexa, if you could stand up, please. Alexa is our new assistant planner and planning division, obviously. Uh, she's going to be assisting us with our neighborhood programs. Uh, she can Liz Williams, Darren Burrich, and the staff there. So if anybody's interested in forming a neighborhood association, Alexa will, will be one of the people that you'll be contacting. I'm sure you'll be seeing her at plan commission meetings and neighborhood meetings uh, in the near future. But we wanted to make sure that you had a chance to meet her and see her face to face and welcome her to, uh, to welcome her to the city. Welcome, Alexa. Welcome. welcome. Okay, I'm going to ask the clerk to take the roll call of the council members. Pack. Here. Herman. Uh, here. Allison Osby. Here. Hansky. Here. Fitzgerald. Here. Cummings. Here. Tower. Here. Present seven. I'm going to ask all to rise for the invocation to be led by Council Member Peck <coughs> and the Pledge of Allegiance to be led by our students. We ask for guidance tonight as we begin this meeting. May all those who participate in our discussions and our decisions reflect the values that we cherish in this great city. Ask our students to turn around there so the people out there in television land can see who you are. Okay, also, I think people like to, to know who you are, know just a little bit about you here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass the microphone down. I want each one of you to introduce yourself, speak right into the microphone, and uh, tell us where you go to school and what year in school you are, and if you're involved in some activities outside of school or at school in, in ways outside the classroom. Hello, my name is Jake Ketter. I go to South Park Middle School and I am in eighth grade. I participate in football, basketball, and track. My name is Haley Tovar and I go to Perry Tipler Middle School and I am in seventh grade and I love basketball and gymnastics. My name is Emily Rowland. I go to South Park Middle School. I'm in eighth grade and I play soccer and I run cross country and track. I'll tell you athletes here. Good. Uh, what I have here is a certificate because we do appreciate you taking time, coming down and leading the, the pledge for us. So I'm going to pass out the certificates uh, in appreciation to you. Jake? Haley? And Emily. All right. So we could have a hand for our students. Appreciate <laughs> and you folks are welcome to take off. And do whatever you still need to do tonight. So again, thanks for being here. Okay, also tonight we have a special uh, presentation and I'm going to turn it over to the city manager to, to introduce our speaker who provide us with, with the presentation. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Jerry DeShane. Jerry is the Executive Director of the League of Wisconsin Municipalities, and uh, I had the pleasure of working with Jerry on the board uh, in our, I guess, our transition from Jerry uh, assuming uh, the role uh, earlier last year. Uh, and Jerry is going to be talking about the Partnership for Prosperity program that has been uh, initiated by the League to communicate uh, some of the League's uh, initiatives and things we'll be working on in the next a uh, few years after our strategic plan was adopted. So, Jerry, I'll leave it up to you. Thank you very much, Mark. Um, thank you, Mayor Tower. Good evening, members of the council and residents of the city of Oshkosh. I've been with the league now for about 10 months, and one of our highest priorities, Mark was on our board of directors for most of that time, 
one of our highest priorities is to re-engage with our membership. And that's you. That's getting to know you, getting to know the needs of the city of Oshkosh. I was up in Marinette yesterday, over in Peshtigo. So far in about 10 months, I've covered about 20,000 miles and have met, I think conservatively, about 500 of your peers. <laughs> what I'd like to do tonight is talk a little bit about the state legislature, the legislative process. And at the end of this, I've got a sales pitch. There's something that I'm going to ask each of you. So be prepared for that. If you look at our presentation on your monitors, it's called the Partnership for Prosperity. The League exists for two reasons. First, to educate its members. But second of all, to educate the state legislature about the needs of local government. And in the past, we've done that by bringing them a laundry list of complaints, asks, pleadings, whatever you want to call it. And we decided to take a different look at it this year and to take a different tack, which is to recognize that the state cannot function if the city of Oshkosh cannot function, and vice versa. You need the state, the state needs you. We're partners. Whether we love it or hate it, we are partners with the state of Wisconsin. And so what our legislative agenda is this year is an invitation to the state to partner with us. And I'll talk about the details. I know that you're also interested in what's going on with the governor's budget, which was introduced just a few weeks ago, how that's going to impact your city, how that's going to impact communities across the state. My challenge, according to the mayor, is to get all of this done in about 10 minutes or less <laughs> to allow for time for questions. So here we go. First, a little bit about the League. For those of you that are not familiar with us, we've been around a long time. Uh, founded in 1898. Um, that is Mark up in the upper left-hand corner. <laughs> you can see board service has aged him just a little bit. No, seriously, those were our founding fathers. Uh, we were founded at the time when women did not have the right to vote. So we are quite old. Uh, there are almost 600 members of the League. We represent every city in the state of Wisconsin and virtually all of the villages. Um, median size member of the League has a population of about 1,450. Now let's take a look at our partner, the Wisconsin State Legislature. There are 19 Republican, 14 Democrats in the, in the State Senate. 63 Republicans, 36 Democrats in the Assembly. We're a nonpartisan organization, but we have to re recognize that our partner is a partisan organization. And we have to live and work in their world. Uh, the legislative leadership, State Senator Scott Fitzgerald is from Dodge County. Uh, the minority leader is Senator Jennifer Schilling from La Crosse. Uh, the Speaker of the Assembly, which is a title that essentially means what he says goes in the State Assembly is Robin Voss. The minority leader is Peter Barca. Then there are what I call the local caucus. Um, 17 members of the 33 member state senate were at one time or another in local government. And I bring that up for a very specific reason. Again, we are partners. And in many ways, this is the training ground for the state legislature. 45 members of the state assembly have held an elected position at the local level. When I look at Oshkosh's elected state legislators, Steve Hintz is a former city manager. No, excuse me. Gordon. Manager Gordon. or consultant. <laughs> Gordon. And uh, Gordon Hintz, not Steve Hintz. His father is a city manager. <clears throat> but Gordon Hintz was, has a background in city management. And uh, State Senator Mark Gudex was the mayor of Mayville until he was elected to the legislature, was also on the Fond du Lac City Council. So again, that connection exists. Turning to look at what we perceive to be the challenges going forward, uh, this is the state's budget time. The governor introduces his budget during the months of January, February of every odd-numbered year. And the legislature hems and haws over it for about four months before finally passing it in May. Uh, the state's transportation fund is in very serious deficit shape. And since we rely on the state for general transportation aids, for transit aids, um, where they go, we go. We were very concerned about room taxes. I don't know if the city of Oshkosh has a room tax ordinance. You do. The state legislature last session looked at a bill that would curtail your ability to decide where to spend that money. Uh, essentially put it into the hands of 
more of a private sector council. Um, merits to it, good idea, bad idea, you can debate that all day long, but the fact of the matter is that is not in the interest of most cities. We're concerned that that was going to come up, that the state would also take away or water down your ability to charge your utility for payments in lieu of, lieu of taxes. Uh, there is also some talk at the state legislature in about post-retirement health benefits requiring you to fund those up front, which would be another added cost to local governments. Um, limitations on annexation powers. There will be bills introduced to take away more of a city's ability to annex. Uh, there will be more limitations on extraterritorial zoning. And we are always worried about the legislature passing bills that limit local finance decision, is a nice way to put it. But the first surprise when we saw the governor's budget was that local governments actually came out pretty well. Consider, if you will, that the governor was facing a $2.2 billion structural deficit. The, the promises that were out there exceeded the state's means by over $2 billion. Um, the governor is proposing $300 million in cuts to the University of Wisconsin system. But there are no cuts in his budget to shared revenue. There's no cuts to the expenditure restraint program or to local government's transportation aids or to our transit aids. No additional restrictions on levy limits. So that's all good news in a very tough budget year. But I'll call your attention to my last bullet point. It's early. It ain't over yet. Um, there's always a lot of pushing and pulling back and forth. You know, don't cut him, don't cut her, don't cut me. Well, nobody wants to, nobody wants to pay the price or pay the penalty. So things could change. Another surprise in the state budget that we did not expect was a proposal to do a wholesale change of the assessment process. Mr. Roloff and I talked briefly about this. I understand there are a lot of questions. But essentially, the governor is proposing shifting from a municipal-based system for small communities to a county-based system. And this, oh, I would say three quarters of the states do it this way now. It's a county-based or some regional-based system. It's not a town-by-town, -town, village by village, city by city system. Uh, there was an article in the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel earlier this year, no, excuse me, late last year if you want to Google it, that talked about some of the inconsistencies that the state sees in that process. Um, the city of Oshkosh could opt itself out if it chose to. First and cl second class cities can opt out and continue to do what you're doing. I know there's at least one Fox Valley community that just spent, oh, I believe $100,000 was the number on an assessment software system. So for them to simply abandon that at this time doesn't make any sense. The ink is not dry on this. Um, I've been a lobbyist for about 20 years. My political barometer says this gets pulled out of the budget and dealt with separately. So don't, it could happen that this would remain and become law. Uh, I frankly doubt it. Third budget surprise, the local government property insurance fund. Uh, Mr. Roloff, is the city of Oshkosh participating in the fund? Do you insure your property in the fund? Oh, yes, we do. Yeah, there are about a thousand communities in Wisconsin rely on this state-run insurance program for your property insurance. Um, I don't have the number off the top of my head. I want to say $50 billion in local government property is insured by the fund. But the problem with this is that the state is not a good fund manager. The fund is currently losing money. Um, not that many years ago, Go, the state gave $12 million in surplus away out of the fund. This happened about four or five years ago. And as a result, they're in a deficit. And um, in the governor's budget, he said there are private sector alternatives. Local government can go to the private sector. That is turning out to be a lot more complicated than I think anyone expected. And this, too, if I had to guess, will come out of the budget. Uh, the league participates. We have an insurance company that provides insurance coverage to our members. We don't currently provide this type of coverage, but we're looking at it. We're not going to leave any of our members hanging out there. On the upside, uh, Senator Gudex is marshalling through several changes to tax increment financing. 
that would help TIF districts that are struggling, would also remove some of the paperwork barriers in the TIF program. We expect to see some positive improvements in TIF law as a result of Senator Gudex's work. We're also working with several freshman legislators. I talked about that local caucus. These are freshman legislators. One of them is a mayor, still serving mayor. I love mayors. Just ask anybody, Mayor Tower. Yeah, not, he's not smiling. <laughs> We're working with them for a little bit of flexibility on levy limits. Levy limits will be with us forever. But what we're asking the state legislature for is some flexibility, what's called carry forward. Let's say you have 3% new construction growth. The law currently says you could grow your levy by 3% next year. But what if you don't need 3%? Could you maybe bank half of that for a rainy day, if you will? The effect of it, if you think about it, actually reduces property taxes in the short run. So it should be appealing. And it, it allows a community not to be into this use it or lose it mentality. But we're getting some traction among legislators for that idea. There, if, you're, if you've been watching the state transportation debate, and I'm looking at the clock here, realizing I'm running short of time, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but if you've been confused by the transportation budget problem, go to that website and watch the three-minute video called Filling the Potholes. Um, the local government institute, which the league, the towns, and the counties co-sponsor, is a research organization, and they did a research project that showed what's happening to local streets as a result of the state budget, and it's very enlightening. Partnership for Prosperity Agenda, I'll just touch on a couple of quick points here. Cities and villages are where most economic activity happens in Wisconsin. 70% of the state's population lives in cities and villages. 87% of all manufacturing, all commercial property, <coughs> is in cities and villages. As a result, we're asking, again, for this partnership with state government. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on these. These are agenda items that we will be pressing forward on after the governor's budget. And there's a summary in front of each of you. But what I'd like to conclude with is my sales pitch, if you will. You each have a little card in front of you. I've been a lobbyist for about 25 years. I work with the legislature on a regular basis. Uh, the League is very fortunate. You have a very talented attorney named Kurt Witinski as the primary lobbyist who has been working with the legislature for 27 years. But neither of us can do our job effectively without you. There is absolutely no way our organization can be effective unless Senator Gudex hears from you, unless Representative Hintz hears from you. What I'm asking you to do, there's a card in front of each of you asking you to join what we call our lobby core. And we also have what's called the rapid action team. The difference between the two is lobby core, we will ask you to come to Madison three times a year and talk to your legislators there. Rapid action team, if you're not able to come to Madison, we're going to put you on an email list. And when something comes up for a vote, Senator Gudex's TIF bills, for example, you will get an email from us saying, please, now's the time. And we usually have about 72 hours notice. Please contact Senator Gudex. But I can't emphasize this enough. We need your expertise. We need your knowledge. There's an old, old saying that all politics is local. Well, the bottom line is you're the folks that vote for the folks that are in the Capitol in Madison. You're the people whose opinion really matters. So please join that. Um, I want to wrap up with a short presentation, and then I'll take any questions you may have. And I, I thank you for giving me a little bit of extra time. But one of your members, um, or one of the people in this room, took the time to get involved. He sort of took us up on it, took us seriously, when we said that we need your knowledge, we need your expertise. Your city manager, Mark Roloff, has been a member of the League's Board of Directors from 2011 until just last October. And that was probably one of the most dynamic periods in the League's recent history. Uh, my successor, or my predecessor, had been in office for 25 years. The League had been a very stable organization. We had a strategic plan. Under the technology component, the strategic plan said we should get a toll-free telephone number. 
there were a lot of things at the league that needed to be updated and that needed to be changed. And Mark was a, an important part of that. And Mark, on behalf of the League of Municipalities, I'd like to thank you for your work and present you with this plaque in recognition. <laughs> Mark and, and by the way, once we, once we got a hook in and we don't let him go, Mark <laughs> and my membership and communications coordinator, Gail Sumi, and I were downstairs in your TV studio talking about how the league could use that sort of video to get the word out. So we, we'll never let him go. <laughs> um, I, I thank you very much. I realize I've run a little bit long, but do you have any questions for me? Oops. Uh, a, a quick question, Mr. Duchesne. I appreciate your giving that uh, breakdown of the caucus. I was telling uh, uh, Ms. Sumi before, I, I, I do enjoy reading the municipality. I noticed in the last issue uh, you identified all of the uh, new and, and existing legislators, uh, both in the Assembly and Senate, that are, that are local members. Uh, I'm sorry, had been, been members of their local uh, village board and city mm -hmm. council. I, is, that, is that a higher number than we've experienced in, in past years, or is that a, a, a lesser amount? We don't have the data. Uh, I really don't know for sure. My gut tells me it's about the same. It, it ebbs and flows a little bit here or there. Um, as, as an observer of humanity, if you will, I was also a reporter at one time in my career. I, I will tell you that the people I'm looking at are sort of natural born legislators. Y you are into the governing process. And believe it or not, not everybody likes to do what you do. <laughs> And moving on to the state legislature is a natural progression. So my, my gut tells me it's about the same. I don't really have hard data to prove that. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. So who's moving up? <laughs> <laughs> I'm retiring. <laughs> Good man. I got a question for you. Yes, uh, sir. On the assessment information, uh, you talked about moving to the counties and we would have the choice. But as I understand, at least talking to Mark, I think there's a, another issue tied into that, about 100% a year. Mm -hmm. Could you explain that a little bit? Because that probably actually is more significant in some ways to us than the other. I refer yeah. to it as the poison pill, Jerry, because I think that that's going to be a, a big part of it. It's not just a, a get out of jail free card for us because of the, uh, the requirement that is over and above anything that we're doing right now. So that's... I think that's the question. Yeah, and, and Mayor, what he's talking about is the other part of the change to assessment is every community, every town, city, and village would be required to assess at 100% of market value every year. And um, I'm not an assessor. I don't know all the ins and outs of that, but common sense tells you that that is quite a bit more work than what a lot of communities are doing now. So I... The Towns Association are, are livid about this provision. My members, I'll be honest with you, about half the communities think it's a good idea, half think it's a bad idea, and the other half think the timing is wrong. The 100% or the move to the counties? Both. Or both of them? Both. Okay, it's both just, them. it's being proposed too abruptly. Okay. That there just needs to be a little more thought in how it's done. Okay. Any other questions? Mm -mm. If not, I thank you for coming up here. We thank Gail for being here also. Gail sitting in the, in the front row right there. So and, and feel we'll free take to those stay cards or if you have to take off, feel free to take off too. Although we got a resolution coming up here pretty quickly. You at least want to stay for that, I'm sure. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Okay, that moves us to a new resolution. I'll read the resolution and so read the resolution. If anybody out there would like to come and speak to the resolution, feel free to do so. After that, I'll bring it back to the council for a motion in a second. The new resolution is Resolution 15-59, Support the League of Wisconsin Municipalities Partnership for Prosperity Agenda, which you all have in, in, in the back of your books there. So anybody I'd like to come forward to speak to that? See no one come forward, I'll bring it back to the council for any questions they may have. We can ask Mark or... Jerry, yeah. <coughs> At this point, we sort of got some background from Jerry's discussion there. So, <coughs> okay, I'll ask for I'll ask for motion. So, so moved. moved. Second. Motion and a second. <coughs> Any other discussion? Ask clerk take the roll call vote on resolution 15-59. Pack. Aye. 
Ehrman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Pansky? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Tower? Aye. Carried seven. Okay, that takes us to a public hearing for tonight. Public hearings, I'm required to read three, to three times. If anybody, excuse me, we got to pass these down. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have time to fill mine out, so I'll fill it up and get it back to you. As I was saying, we have a public hearing. I need to, to read this three times. During the three times I'm reading it, if any citizens would like to come forward and speak to it, please feel free to come up to the microphone up here. Okay, it's resolution 15-60, final resolution vacating portion of Mount Vernon Street, 1400 block. Second reading. Resolution 15-60, final resolution vacating portion of Mount Vernon Street, 1400 block. Third and final reading, Resolution 15-60, final resolution vacating portion of Mount Vernon Street, 1400 block. I see no one coming forward. i bring it back to the council for a motion and a second. So moved. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll ask the clerk to take the vote on I just want to okay, mention, I mean, sorry. the, the, the uh, director of the housing authority is here tonight. I know there was some discussion last time, but if there's any questions from the council, um, I just, just wanted to make note of that. Any further comments? Move forward. <laughs> okay, let's start, take the roll call vote on resolution 15 60. Peck? Aye. Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Pansky? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Teller? Aye. Carried seven. Okay, that takes us to citizen statements to the council. This is a time when citizens have an opportunity to come up to the microphone. Maybe make some comment on something you think is going particularly well in the city you'd like to comment on, or maybe there's something you have a concern about in the city. <clears throat> if you'd like to make a comment about something you have a concern about, also feel free to come up to the microphone. And a few rules. One is, that if you get up to the microphone, we'd like you to give us your name and your address. Limit your comments to no more than five minutes. Speak directly to the council. If this is not the time to cover anything on the rest of the business agenda. And no electioneering. Anybody like to come forward at this time? I see no one coming forward. So that takes us to the consent agenda items. Consent agenda items are a number of items that are provided to the council that are viewed to be non-controversial in nature by the administration. Um, if either a citizen um, or a council member would like an item removed from the consent agenda, we will do so and consider it separately. Otherwise, the consent agenda will come forward to the council as a package. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to read through each of the items. If at a time I read an item and you'd like to comment on it, please come up to the microphone at that time. I'll stop reading on it, and then you can comment on that particular item. Uh, when everybody's had a chance to do that who's who, here in the council chamber, I'll bring it back uh, to the council for discussion and then uh, uh, approval. Okay, approval of bills presented by the finance director. Receipt and filing of museum board minutes from January 8, 2015. Receipt and filing of common council minutes from February 10, 2015. Receipt of claim filed with the city's insurance company. We got two of those, Karen Steinecke for alleged damages from the police department. The second one, Douglas Posh for alleged damages from a fall on a patch of ice. Resolution 15-61, award bid for floor sweeper, scrubber for street division to Fairchild equipment. <coughs> Resolution 15-62, award bid for equipment trailer for street division to the Clean Trailer Sales, Inc. Resolution 15-53, award bid for skid steer to street division of Fabco Equipment, Inc. Resolution 15-64, approved purchase of 2015 IAS World Service Agreement for IT division to Tyler Technologies. Resolution 15-65, award bid for Street Sweeper for Streets Division to Bruce Municipal, Inc. Resolution 15-66, approve accepting utility easement from Winnebago County from Arrow Innovate Way westerly to Knapp Street Road. Resolution 15-67, approve accepting utility easements from Winnebago County and the City of Oshkosh within Aviation Business Park. <coughs> <clears throat> Resolution 15-68, approved disposition of surplus property to Winnebago County on west side of Arrow Innovate Way. Resolution 15-69, accept 
dedication of street right of way for Arrow Innovate Way and south side of Ripple Road Aviation Business Park. Resolution 15-70, approved professional service agreement for engineering construction services with Strand Associates Aviation Business Park. Resolution 15-71, approval of amendment to agreement for engineering services with CUNY Architects LLC for design, bidding, construction management services related to phase three of the upgrade of the central garage. Resolution 15-72, reauthorize continuance of self-assurance for workers' compensation. Resolution 15-73, accept street right-of-way for south side of 1000 block <coughs> East Parkway Avenue. Resolution 15-74, authorize sponsorship of Rain Barrel Workshop. Resolution 15-75, approval of special event. And now I'm going to read a number of special events, but I won't say special event each time. Oshkosh Festivals, Inc., to utilize city streets for their Oshkosh St. <coughs> Patrick's Day Parade and Party, March 14, 2015. Resolution 15-76. NAMI Oshkosh to utilize city streets for their NAMIs. Oshkosh's Suicide Awareness 5K Run Walk, April 25, 2015. Resolution 15-77, Bago Walleye Club to utilize Menominee Park for their Bago Walleye Club Tournament Series, May 3, May 31, June 28, and July 26, 2015. Resolution 15-78, Terry's Bar to utilize Menominee Park for their Terry's Bar Walleye Tournament, May 16, 2015. Resolution 15-79, Oshkosh Festivals, Inc. to utilize Leach Amphitheater, Riverside Park parking lot, and city streets for their Oshkosh Irish Fest and 5K Walk, June 11, 12, 13, and 14, 2015. Resolution 15-80, Oshkosh Fine Arts Association to utilize South Park for the Winnebago Art Fair, June 14, 2014. Resolution 15-81, Central Wisconsin Auto Collectors to utilize South Park for their Central Wisconsin Auto Collectors Car Show and Flea Market, June 28, 2015. Resolution 15-82, Real Men Wear Pink of Wisconsin, Inc. to utilize Menominee Park for the Real Men Wear Pink Softball Tournament, July 10, 11, and 12, 2015. Resolution 15-83, Oshkosh Saturdays Farmers Market, Inc. to utilize South Park for their market in the park, July 15, 2015, through uh, September 30, 2015. That's every Wednesday. So. Resolution 15-84, Wisconsin Alliance of Bass Tournament Anglers to utilize Rainbow Park for their WABTA Oshkosh Open July 18 and 19, 2015. Resolution 15-85, UW Oshkosh Cross Country to utilize city streets for their Titan 5K <coughs> August 1, 2015. <coughs> Resolution 15-86, approve appointments for the following boards and commissions, Landmarks Commission and Sustainability Advisory Board. Resolution 15-87, approved special <coughs> Class B licenses, agent change for combination Class B license, <coughs> operator licenses, and taxi cab driver license. One more chance to come forward. Going once, going twice, going three times. Okay, I'll bring it back to the council for any questions <coughs> or any uh, desire to move any particular items from the consent agenda. Discussion on any item? Um, just a question related to 15-85. I don't know if this would be best handled by Mr. Patek or Mr. Maurer. But, um, I mean, I'm all for, you know, this type of event. But one question that I do have is I know that over the past several years that they have put some rather significant markings down related to um, distance and that. And I know that as an organizer of a race, we're told that we should not be marking on city streets, or if we do. I'll jump in okay. on this one, because we did address that at the special events committee okay. meeting, and they were told absolutely no markings on the pavement because you're correct that had happened in the past and it was made very clear yeah. to them so because the markings from previous events are still there yeah. okay <coughs> questions or comments mayor yeah mr chairman uh this would probably be mr mauer probably it, it's connected to the to all the different fishing tournaments that are are in here so i don't know if i need to specifically address one of them i can 
Um, let's go with um, resolution 15-77. Um, <clears throat> we've had issues the last couple summers with the Menominee Park launch when there's softball tournaments going on at the same time as the fishing tournaments. During the special events, have we made any arrangements for alternative parking for some of these events so that they can either park on the grass that's not being used in Menominee Park or other areas, such as we've done in the winter for <clears throat> for um, uh, Otter Street, and I, I believe that the Battle and Bagel is going to be parking on the grass. Are we doing anything to make those that lot, which is, a, is fairly small, and a multi-use lot of we made arrangements as part of the special events for them to park in alternative locations yeah one thing the special events committee has done is we don't allow a softball tournament to take place during a fishing tournament so we've avoid some of that conflict um, but we also do work with them um, we actually have an agreement that they can park on the turf in certain areas and they sign an agreement with us that if they damage any of the turf their their organization is responsible for the repairs okay do we as a um, entity to allow these uh, fishing tournaments and even softball tournaments to designate parking areas and actually close off parking lots for just those events and then they either compensate us or however because our call is usually the local fishermen that can't now get into the boat launch or vice versa we do have in the city ordinance um, if the fishing tournament is I'd have to think back if it's 250 boats or 250 teams or more they can essentially buy out the parking lot which then gives them exclusive use of the parking lot and we do barricade it and they do um, set attendance so that it is exclusive for their use um, but otherwise no we um, you know it's pretty much come as come as you are first come first serve the the, um, the boat trailer parking spots we did expand last year um, I don't recall how many but we did in um, in lieu of some of those complaints that we did receive expand that right. But yes, we do have some alternatives for dealing with some of the bigger fishing tournaments. Okay. And then I know last year you, you sent an email out to council members that you put a temporary sign up uh, alerting local residents and fishing people about some of the rule changes and parking issues. Do we have a more permanent sign this year or something that they're going to be able to see as they come into the launch areas of where parking is permitted and where it's not? Um, well, we did last year, or I think it was two years ago now, we ex actually expanded the number of hours for the parking for boat launch. Um, they can park down there, and I have to take a look at the sign again, but I believe it's Monday through Friday. They can park up until 4 or 5 p.m. Um, because that's when the softball players start coming in. They can park in the single or double stalls. And then after that, they would start getting ticketed if they were in, parked inappropriately. Um, and then on weekends, I believe we give them until 8 o'clock in the morning, they can park in the single and double stalls. And then again, if we have softball tournaments or something going on, that's when we would start um, doing ticket enforcement. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Mr. Cummings. Thank you, Mayor Tower. Uh, just one comment on Resolution 1583. I think it's great to see that the farmer's market will now be on Wednesdays as well. Uh, the times will be 3 to 7. And what, while you're up here, Mr. Morrow, what, where will we be setting up in uh, South Park? Um, we met with um, Dennis and Carlene and actually walked out at the site. It'll be the large shelter, shelter number one. They'll be renting that for the entire um, duration of their the season. And then they'll be setting up their um, vendors and their food trucks um, just ad adjacent to the shelter area. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's important to note this is an addition to the Saturday's right. farmer market, not a replacement to Wednesday. So there'll be two farmers markets during the week rather than just one. So <coughs> we appreciate that. Any other comments on anything? Yep. I have another one. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Davis could come forward. This is def dealing with the resolutions 15 66 through. 15-70, dealing with the Aviation Industrial Park. Uh, just If you could just give us an update where we're at. I know there's a lot of <coughs> improvements of easements and things. Has Winnebago County approved on their end? And are we first in the chain of command? Or how is this working as far as the collaboration? <coughs> and, and how are things going with the, this is just for the first phase. I know we approved the TIF district and that for a lot of these improvements and things to, to cover the cost, but just give, give us a little update. Sure. Uh, we're doing the final design of the Aviation Business Park, which we still expect to bid this spring for construction this summer. Uh, these easements are a result of the final design, exactly figuring out exactly where the <coughs> drainage soils are going to go and where the water mains are going to go. In fact, one of the water main easements is for an extra that we've actually added as an alternate bid 
uh, that would improve water service to the aviation business park. So that wasn't <coughs> originally uh, included in the scope of the project, but as the engineers have examined things and we look at the budget, we think we might be able to afford a little more water main uh, extension to help the, the occupants in the future. So uh, this has been throughout uh, the county's process. The aviation committee approved it and the county board approved it, I think, two weeks ago. So this would be the last piece before we submit it all as a package to EDA so they can bless it before we bid it. Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay. Other questions, comments? <clears throat> I'm going to ask the city manager to comment on, on one, and that's resolution 15-72, reauthorize continuance of self-insurance for workers' compensation. That's one of those kind of costs that's kind of buried in there and hidden in there that was fairly significant. You want to comment on just what that is, how that works, and the, the cost to us? Sure. How's, how's that come down over the last few years as, as we moved to automated garbage trucks, which used to be the uh, area where we used to have a lot of claims on we are self-insured and so as a result of that um, every two years or so we need to have council reaffirm that's state law that uh, you're self-insured for workers comp so that's why it's before you tonight workers comp costs continue to flow up and down because because we're self-insured we pay on actual costs incurred um, your question regarding um, refuse we've seen that cost go down there's a base cost that we pay as well as the cost of actual um, uh, losses incurred when there's an accident and we, we have to pay those out. I can tell you that the numbers have gone down dramatically for uh, refuse workers. They used to be one of the highest um, rates we paid for the base of our insurance. Now they're much lower because essentially they're, they're for the most part, they're in their truck and, and not getting out and, and uh, wrenching their backs and things like that. So that's been a, a huge improvement. Um, we haven't had any major ones, uh, and the, the only uh, <clears throat> one I can recall to memory, and I know we've probably had others, but there was one, um, the person stepped out of the truck because there was some problem. And they stepped out of the truck and they hurt themselves stepping out of the truck. So they got to stay in the truck, and that's probably the most important thing, but I think we've demonstrated that that's improved. Um, because it goes through cycles, you can see that um, on the page that it says the comparison of the fully insured versus self-insured. You'll see the claims. Um, we put a number in just for demonstration purposes of what our average has been over the last five years, and that's $219,000. And you can see that our total cost of $305,000 when about 70% of our costs are claims. Um, our overhead is very low, um, and that's what keeps us, uh, keeps our rate so reasonable. If we were to go into the market for fully insured, workers comp we'd be paying six hundred sixty thousand dollars a year uh, right out of the gate so we want I knew that this was an issue that was sensitive to council because of our discussions about health insurance and um, I think this is the type of comparison that the council was looking for so I wanted to include that for your uh, deliberation tonight okay if there's nothing <laughs> else I'll ask for a motion second on the consent agenda as provided to the council so moved. Moved. Second. Been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Comments? Seeing none, I'll ask the clerk to take the roll call vote of the council members on the consent agenda. Pat? Aye. Herman? Aye. Alex Nasby? Aye. Pansky? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Tower? Aye. Carried seven. Okay, there were no items removed from the consent agenda, so that takes us to pending ordinances. Uh, the first one is Ordinance 15 88. I will read each one of these. Uh, we'll consider each one separately as I read it. If you'd like to comment on a particular ordinance, please come to the microphone. Uh, give us your name and address and make your comments. Ordinance 15-88, adopt ordinance to allow natural prairie prescribed burning and repeal Chapter 21 pollution. I see no one coming forward. Bring it back to the council for a motion and a second. So moved. Second. second. Any discussion? Council members? Seeing none, I'll ask clerk take the roll call vote on Ordinance 15-88. Pack? Aye. <coughs> Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Pansky? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Tower? Aye. Carried seven. Okay, it takes us to ordinance 15 89, approved request from Fox Valley uh, Technical College Foundation, Inc., to attach property to the city from Town of Nakaimai, <laughs> FVTC Foundation, uh, Inc., voluntary attachment, 4233 Wapan Road. 
Anybody like to come forward to speak to that? Seeing no one coming forward, bring it back to council for a motion and a second. So moved. Second. second. Any discussion <coughs> at this point? Seeing none, I'll ask the clerk to take the roll call vote on ordinance 15 89. Pack? Aye. Herman? Aye. Allison Asby? Aye. Pansky? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Tower? Aye. Carried seven. Okay, that takes us to new ordinances, and new ordinances are, have to be read at two consecutive council meetings and are not voted on until the second council meeting. So what, we're gonna ha what I'm going to do is I'm going to read through a number that are have the first reading tonight. As I read one, if you'd like to comment on it tonight, you can. You can come up to the microphone as, I, as I'm reading that particular <coughs> ordinance. But they will not come back to the council for a vote tonight. They will be read again at the next council meeting. And the council meeting, and then the uh, council itself will, will consider those ordinances at that point in time at the next council meeting. The first one, ordinance 15 90, approve extension of agreement with TSG for licensing, software support, and upgrade for telephone system, and authorize the waiving, bids, the waiving of bids to purchase telephone system upgrades and licensing, <coughs> software support, and upgrades from TSG. See no one come forward? The second one. Mayor. 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 Yes, I'm sorry. I'd like to make a motion on this uh, ordinance to waive the rules <coughs> and adopt them first reading. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded that we waive the rules and vote on, on this one tonight. Uh, before taking a vote of the council and having discussion, I'll see if anybody out there would like to make a comment on the waiving of the rules and handling this one tonight. See no one come forward, I'll bring it back uh, to the council. Uh, any discussion regarding waiving the rules? Um, just, just I'd like to have Mr. Roloff explain why it, we would want to waive the rules tonight. That there is some fiscal impacts and because so the city attorney understand. asked me to, so I'll have her. <laughs> all right. Well, all right. Then you can defer to the gentle lady. There's um, some urgency <coughs> with it because of our current lease running out, and so in order to. Um, facilitate that extension of the lease which goes along with this that's why we are requesting the waiving of the rules and by doing this that there's an actual we can realize a potential budget savings in years in out years correct okay thank you any other questions or comments okay I'll ask clerk to take the roll call vote on the waiving of the rules on Pack. ordinance 15-90 sorry Pack. aye Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Pansky? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Tower? Aye. Carried seven. Okay, I'll ask for a motion and a second on ordinance 15 90. Now to waive. The rules have been waived. So moved. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll ask the clerk to take the roll call vote on ordinance 15 90. Pack? Aye. Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Pansky? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Tower? Aye. Carried seven. <coughs> okay, it takes us to Ordinance 15 91, amend section 23 3, recycling required to update types of plastic containers accepted for recycling. Seeing no one come forward. Council members have comments? Seeing none, I'll move to Ordinance 15 92, approval of changes for displaying annual parking permits. Coming forward, I see no council members making the uh, moves to say anything. So, ordinance 15-93, approval of parking regulation changes on Wheatfield Way, Kentucky Street, and Florida Avenue. Okay, the last three will be considered for approval by the council at the next council meeting. So there will be further opportunity for citizens to comment on those ordinances at that particular point in time. Okay, new resolutions. And I go through these, uh, we'll do this one at a time. The first one is Resolution 15-94, accept donations and approve agreement with Oshkosh Area Community Foundation and Gerber Leisure Products, Inc. for an inclusive playground at South Park. Anybody like to come forward and speak to this? Before I begin, I wanted to ask, um, we do have a couple committee members that are unable to make it. Can we speak on their behalf as well? How long would you like to speak is what I'll, after? 
a couple minutes each. Huh? <laughs> a couple minutes each. Okay, sure. We'll give you okay. six or seven minutes, so go ahead. Um, I'm Jessica Miller, 1050 oh. Adams Ave in Oshkosh. First, I just wanted to say thank you for taking the time to revisit um, and include our project on the agenda tonight. I know I had spoke with many of you four years ago about this. Um, being in special education for the past six years, as well as always having willingness to be generous to others, I've been inspired <laughs> to make a difference in our great community. As well as set an example for my daughter and other young people that you can do anything that you set your mind to. Four years ago, when I first approached Ray Mauer with my small vision to bring inclusion to our parks, I had no idea the doors that I would be opening. I'm incredibly humbled by the overwhelming support, commitment, and passion I've received from the Parks Department, our committee members, and the Oshkosh community as a whole, and thankful for all their hard work in making this possible. Without them, my vision would just have been a dream, not reality. Um, we talk a lot about inclusion and, and building an inclusive park in Oshkosh, but our overall, overall mission has never just been about building a park. It's been about bringing awareness, understanding, and support to making our community more inclusive, inviting to all people. Um, one question that I've heard many times is, well, aren't your parks in Wisconsin or in Oshkosh already inclusive um, or accessible, rather? And although we do have some very amazing playgrounds, um, none of them are 100% accessible to all people. And that is really what we want to bring to Oshkosh. Um, I just wanted to touch a little bit on some of the pieces. We have a picture of what the park um, layout is going to look like. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, we have the Sway Fun. This is going to be an accessible piece where um, people with, in wheelchairs or walkers can roll right on to. Excuse me a second. Is there a way we can get that in front of the camera at all or not? There you, there you go. go. It's, it's kind of. There it is. Okay. There. Andy's a genius. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Sorry to interrupt you. No, there you're fine. I want people at home to be able to see it also. Lighten the mood a little bit. Good. Okay. Um, the Sway Fun pictured here is going to allow um, people in wheelchairs or walkers to be able to um, roll right onto this structure in their wheelchair and um, be able to play alongside other people or other children, excuse me, um, and have the, <coughs> the, uh, the same sensation that they would from a swing without having to be transported out of their wheelchair. Um, we're going to have double wide ramping throughout the entire structure um, to allow, again, people with mobility issues um, to be able to get to all parts of the structure. And some other aspects is we'll have the bucket seating with the harness apparatus and the, the swing structures. Um, we also have a quieter area um, on one end of the park to really help with children that get overwhelmed and overstimulated but still want to have um, that participation in the park and have an area to play. Um, Throughout the structure, we're going to have panels that will touch upon um, visual and uh, hearing impairments as well. Um, along with that, we'll also have your um, typical monkey bars, balance beams, slides, and other things. So really an inviting playground for all children and all families. Um, as a final phase to this project, we're also launching our Picket Fence campaign March 1st. Um, this is where people will be able to take a stake in our community. Um, people have the opportunity to have their name engraved on individual pickets, and they will be, um, <coughs> in, it'll enclose the structure, the fencing. Um, we want, we just really want all people of all ages to come and enjoy one aspect or another and bring friends and family together in an inviting atmosphere. Is that all you want to say, or do you want to say some other things? That's all I want to say. A little more time. Okay, Thank I you. just want to make sure I have enough time to speak <laughs> to the other Facebook people also. as well, right? Yes, we definitely have a Facebook page. Um, which most people um, are on Facebook, so you can find us there. Just type in the Inclusive Park or Oshkosh Inclusive Park Project. Um, on there, we also have a website too with some additional information and, and all of our community support and donors that we've had um, throughout these last four years. Okay, thank you. Thanks thank for your efforts. Thanks for the information. Hey, I'm Delap, six eight five Clairville. I'm actually going to be reading on behalf of Sarah Mulbar, 2430 Kingston Place. Grandma uses a cane and wants to take her six-year-old granddaughter to the park to play. Dad lost his left foot due to a medical condition and uses a wheelchair to access his community. He enjoys pushing his toddler son on the swing. 
nine-year-old little girl has medical condition that affects her muscles and requires her to use a wheelchair to access her community. She just wants to play with her friends on the park equipment. These are three situations that are just a sample of opportunities that our community members miss out on because we don't have a fully accessible playground. The mission of the Oshkosh Inclusive Park is to create a safe and accessible outdoor recreational environment for individuals of all abilities and ages. The park will include a completely accessible play area with a rubberized ground surface and safety fence. The ultimate goal of the project is to create a, national, a natural environment where values of acceptance, empathy, kindness, and respect are being modeled and learned through recreation, civility, and acceptance of diversity within our Oshkosh community. The Oshkosh Inclusive Park Project will provide children and adults alike an opportunity to engage with everyone in their local community, regardless of their functional ability. The committee has worked to bring about an increased awareness of inclusivity through hosting tables and floats at various community events, Zuluween, St. Patty's Day Parade, Farmer's Markets. It is not only the only, it's not only about the fundraising that our community, our committee has successfully accomplished, but the awareness that we have shared with our community that everyone deserves access to community resources. Our committee would like to thank the Oshkosh City Council for your consideration for additional funding to make this dream a reality. Again, that's from Sarah Malbar. Thank you. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Gail Hawley, and <clears throat> I grew up in Oshkosh and uh, taught at Lourdes for my first four years out of college, and now I teach at St. Mary Central High School in in Nina. As a teacher of high school students, I have witnessed the benefits of an inclusive community in which students grow up playing together and learning together. Differences are accepted and even celebrated when children play and learn together. I believe inclusion is a learned behavior and it begins in childhood. For this reason, I feel that this playground is needed in our community and I'm asking you to support it. Thank you. Anybody else like to come forward? I was going to speak on behalf of Jennifer Tabbert and her family. My name is Jennifer Tabbert. I have three small children, Colson, Kaylee, and Caroline, ages 7, 5, and 1. My son, Colson, is in a wheelchair, and he is not able to walk, has limited use of his arms due to a condition called anthropogryphosis. Sorry. As a mother, it's important to me to be able to provide an environment for my children that allow them to play and learn and have fun, and most of all, to just be a kid. This park is incredibly important to me because it will allow all, my three, all three of my children to play together. Imagine that. You see, it's not easy for us. The playground near our house has wood chips down. My son's wheelchair digs in, and he has been stuck on numerous occasions in the wood chips. The playground near us has stairs and ladders to climb on to the playground equipment. The playground near our house is nothing but a reminder to my son of his limitations. Imagine the look on my seven-year-old boy's face when his sister runs around the playground and he's stuck, quite literally sometimes stuck in the wood chips, watching them play and watching them play with new friends while he watches. What's a boy to do? It hurts my heart as his mama. He doesn't deserve this. As a parent, how do you choose which child to disappoint? Should that even be an option? Well, it's something I face often. My daughter loves going to the playground to play. My son does not. Do I take them to the playground and watch my son's heart break as he's reminded of all the things he can't do? Or do I disappoint my daughter and tell her we, can, we, we should stay home simply because her brother cannot use the playground? I dream of the day this inclusive playground is built. I dream of the day I can say yes to all of my children, yes to all three of my children to run around and play together. This is my story, and this is what the playground will mean to me. This playground will mean so many different things to so many different people of so many different ages and abilities. I cannot wait to see people come together and enjoy the new Oshkosh Inclusive Park. Thank you so very much. Any further one? comments? <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, 
<coughs> Want to get the hat, Mike? Ray? Ray? Ray. I think it's on. Good evening. My name is Shinji Buke. I live at 224 East Tennessee Avenue. Now, I share in Cousin Park, Park Project is grateful to the generous donors, corporations, and individuals that have embraced what it means to be inclusive in the city of Oshkosh. I've been part of the committee since the beginning. One of the responsibilities is to take care and monitor our Facebook page, which we have shared stories of why this park is so important. As of this morning, we are over 500 likes on our page, which to, which to me shows people are engaged in the purpose of this project. For those of you who didn't know before, I'm in a wheelchair. <laughs> um, I moved to Oshkosh because of the opportunity to be independent. I've had folks like Judy Burton and the CP organization support my dreams and desires of being an independent person. My desires include changing the perception of people with disabilities. This mission, the mission of this project aligns with my dreams of being valued and included in my community like any other citizen of Oshkosh. It means a lot to me to be part of such a great project. Thank you for this opportunity and I hope you will approve this proposal tonight. Thank you. <clears throat> Tampa Lap 685 Clairville. You're reading on behalf of someone else now. No, nope, I'm reading. This is my turn. <laughs> okay, this, this one's yours. Okay. And so I, I come to you um, tonight with complete gratitude. Um, four years ago, you opened the door to a group of citizens in the community, a group of individuals that care about the community and have used our passion to inspire others. We have spent hundreds of hours speaking with in, uh, about inclusion we have talked to friends and neighbors local business leaders service groups and city officials the project created opportunities to talk about kindness respect acceptance and the value of others at any age or ability any color any religious or ethnic background we have educated people through our conversations about the differences between ada law and inclusion. 
Removing physical barriers is just the first step towards the goal of community inclusion. The Common Council opened the door for citizen engagement, and that is something that we are truly grateful for. Yes, it's four years since we started this project, and that's a long time to be fundraising. This time was actually a gift. The community conversation about inclusion has made significant impact in Oshkosh, and that four-year four time frame was time well spent. We as ordinary citizens were able to take our passion and make positive change within our community, and you created that opportunity. The support between the City of Oshkosh and the Community Foundation has been nothing short of amazing. Their support in helping us to raise the funds has been, a critical, has been critical to the success of completing the project. Isn't this the perfect model of how communities are built? We are creating a place that people search for when raising their families. A community that cares enough about its residents to build venues like the Oshkosh Inclusive Park. A place where neighbors help neighbors, business leaders get involved in inclusion conversations, and city officials engage their citizens to promote healthy, positive values. We are proud of these accomplishments and truly appreciate the critical partnerships that make the city of Oshkosh such a great, great place to live. We hope you will consider the additional allocation to the project so that we can begin in the spring. Once the project is completed and city residents and visitors to our event city discover this addition, it will become a long-term conversation about inclusion. Let this be a place that creates possibilities for future generations. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Diane Abraham, 175 Wildwood Drive. I'm here representing the Oshkosh Area Community Foundation and what can I say after we heard all of this with we are just the foundation is so proud to have partnered with the Parks Department and this wonderful committee that really worked very tirelessly to really kick the fundraising goal efforts out of the park and I just have to say listening to the comments that were made I can speak on behalf of the foundation we are very inspired over these past years of the work that they have done not only to do all the fundraising work that needed to be done and talk to all the donors that we have that supported this project to, to really bring this conversation to the community that needed to be done clearly an inclusive park was an unmet need in the community and clearly we got the job done with supporting it to $140,000 so I really want to not only thank the committee and the city for working together but all the generous donors that we have that did support this project I'd like to call out that we had the John Kinsel Foundation made a significant gift of 25000 and Community First Credit Union also made a match gift of 25000 And we were so inspired at the foundation level that the board made a $50,000 grant to this project. We just think that this is so important to the city and highlights how important our public and private partnerships are to make the city a better place to live, a better place for everybody of all abilities to have those positive experiences in a playground setting. So with that, I do want to shout out to the committee the great work that they did and also the work that you do in supporting our, the quality of life in Oshkosh. Thank you. Anybody else like to come forward at this point in time? <coughs> If not, I'll bring it back to, uh, to the council for a motion <coughs> and a second on resolution 15 94. So, so moved. moved. Second. There's a second. Moved and second. Discussion? Yes. Just Ms. a Pansky. round of applause to the committee members. Oh, I okay. think your efforts in this are amazing. Thank you, guys. Others? Just a Quick question. It, it, we, we discussed this at uh, Parks Advisory Board and, and unanimously uh, uh, approved recommending it. I, I know at the time there was some discussion of, of some of the additional funds because the committee had gone over and above uh, what even what they had anticipated in fundraising. And uh, Mr. Roloff, I don't know if you could explain. Uh, uh, Mr. Maurer had, had, had told our Parks Advisory Board that through some discussions with uh, Ms. Larson and yourself, uh, we had identified uh, where that additional funding can come from, from uh, I, I believe it was previous capital improvement budgets that weren't tapped into? 
Yes, we have um, several capital project uh, budgets that were under budget over the last couple of years, and Mr. Maurer is proposing that we use those funds uh, as our additional allocation. Um, we could use that for to <coughs> borrow less, uh, but it was borrowed for in anticipation of a project getting done. We could simply allocate it over, and the resolution you have in front of you would would effectuate that that change and would fund it completely. Yeah. And, and ultimately, this that that difference has no has a zero net uh, impact on our on our current year operating budget or not our at all. Year uh, uh, borrowing, okay. not at all. Thank you. Um, Other comments? <clears throat> I'd just like to say that it, it's really inspiring to see so many times we've heard things in this community we can't <clears throat> and it's turned around to we can and uh, tonight it's going to be turned into we did so congratulations and thank you for your hard work <clears throat> yes uh mr Arnold, when will it be completed four years from now <laughs> oh, oh. That's not you, can, you can leave right now, <laughs> Ray. Not a good answer, Ray. I'm looking uh, behind you. Wrong answer. No, we. Uh, what we're looking at is weather dependent. We'd like to begin excavation sometime mid-April. Um, installation of the equipment takes about three weeks, and then with the poured-in-place rubber surfacing, the temperatures need to be at a certain temperature before they can put that product in. But our hope is um, weather permitting that it would be completed um, mid to late May. Um, we'd like to have everything rest restored and ready to go by the time school is ended. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Just make a final comment. I just want to thank, again, everybody else involved, the citizens involved, the foundation, Community First, the Kinsey Foundation. Um, also want to thank, thank the taxpayers. I'm, I'm particularly proud of this project because I think it's something that's needed. It will, <coughs> it will provide access. And at the same time, it's, it's a good spending of, of dollars in the community. Uh, taxpayer dollars uh, in the sense of in, uh, uh, providing inclusion but also for every taxpayer dollar out there there's a hundred percent in private funds here and as we get into big ticket items particularly in a lot of the quality of life features in the community the public private partnerships are absolutely critical and that's happened here as it has happened in some other areas so to follow up Mr. Peck's comments we we can do things as long as people work together so thank you all okay I'll ask the clerk to take the roll call vote mm -hmm. On resolution 15 49. Pat? Aye. Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Pansky? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Tower? Aye. Curate 7. Takes us to resolution 15 95. Establish fees for natural prairie prescribed burning permit and fire services. Anybody I'd like to comment on that? Seeing no one comment on it, I'll bring it back to the council for a motion and a second. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion, comments, questions? Seeing none, I'll ask clerk to take the roll call vote on resolution 15 95. Pack? Aye. Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Pansky? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Tower? Aye. Carried seven. Okay, it takes us to council discussion, direction of the city manager, and future agenda items. The first one is Go EDC branding kickoff meeting at the convention center on March 12th at 7:30. Stroll off, want to comment on that? I think you said it all. It's going to be the kickoff where the brand for Go EDC is going to be unveiled. Uh, but we do have the official time and date. We will get you out of there at nine o'clock. That's the pledge that we're going to make so that people can get back to their schedule. But uh, we're going to have, uh, hopefully have some special guests there. Uh, may or may not include. Uh, some folks at the state level may include a new uh, Go EDC executive director, depending on how things go. So a lot of good things going on. Uh, I may have mentioned we hired Erin Sutton. Uh, the, the Go EDC did as the marketing director, and she one of the things she's working on is this event. So you'll see some of the fruits of her labor uh, when we do that on the uh, on uh, March 12th. Hopefully, as many people as possible can attend. Well, it's going to be an exciting time and plus an opportunity for people to learn more about what GoEDC is and what it plans to do over the uh, in, into the future. Future agenda item, workshop tour of Public Works Field Operation Facility located at 639 Witzel <laughs> Avenue. We had said we wanted to take a tour as a council. It's been set up for 430. Uh, that may not be a time when all can arrive, but I suspect people can arrive whenever they're able to arrive and see it. It's a 
it's a new and large facility in, on the inside. Yeah, if, you, if your schedule doesn't work, we'll, we'll get you in there. And if you can't make it at all this time, just contact uh, uh, Street Superintendent, Field Operations Superintendent Kevin Ewan, and we can arrange a private tour as well. But uh, we'll cover a lot of the ground that uh, uh, you didn't see when it was underway, or that hadn't been underway the last, last time you saw it. So really exciting and happy to have you uh, take a tour. Okay, the next thing, Hysteric Heritage Tourism Program, Mr. Cummings. Uh, thank you, Mayor Tower. Uh, this is something that has been worked on for the last couple of years by the Landmarks Commission. Um, we first began with historic markers to go along the riverfront. Next, we started to phase in historic plaques for, uh, you know, uh, buildings, houses, and so forth, so forth through the city. This is not another true partnership or collaboration between a number of different groups. Uh, it involves the Convention and Visitors Bureau, the Museum, Bid Board, Library, Landmarks, the Foundation, and the uh, Winnebago County Historical and Archaeological Society. Our plans are to begin launching historic tours, and our first step will be in the central city. Um, we've, d we've looked at an area from Irving to the river and Jackson to Broadway. The bulk of the historic buildings uh, remain in the city. Uh, we met with the State Historical Society this morning to start looking at um, having a neoclassical district declared, which is the library, uh, the old post office, that area. Uh, the per the, this whole program is really to uh, you know, bring people to the community who spend money. Historic tourism is becoming very big in the country. People do plan trips around historic tours. Uh, it's a way to generate income for the community. Uh, we're looking at things, you know, how do we develop tours to get heads and beds? Anyway, the first thing we're gonna, we need to do is uh, put together an inventory of all the historic properties in the central city to begin with. There's, there's uh, lots of different old tours and brochures we have to consolidate. Uh, working with the Convention and Visitors Bureau, we wanna start doing basically a, a spreadsheet of the historic properties in the central city. That's the first step, then it's developing tourism programs, and then we'll move beyond the central <laughs> city with other programs. And uh, once we have the inventory, then it's to determine what type of tours do we put together. It's just, there's a phenomenal variety of ways to handle <laughs> this tourism. So uh, that is stage one, or step one. And with that, I'll turn to Mr. Roloff for our modest request. Uh, Mr. Cummings had the uh, creative part. I have the more technical part. Um, the cost to have somebody put this information together is estimated to be about $2,000. Because this is tourism related, I think if, if this is something that we want to do, that it would be appropriate to use uh, some room tax dollars, the, the Convention Center Room Tax Fund. Um, uh, Mr. Cummings and some of the staff have had discussions with the CVB uh, it sounds like they're willing to take the lead on managing the program, but this getting this information would uh, would cost us about $2,000, we figure, when all is said and done. So I'd propose that we take it out of the uh, uh, convention center slash uh, room tax fund that, that we maintain uh, for that purpose. So not necessarily for a $2,000 expenditure, I can certainly do it, but I just wanted to, to get some uh, consensus that that was something that the council was comfortable with me doing. Um, I'm prepared to do it. It's, it's been something that has been uh, discussed at the CVB for quite a while now. Well, I'll say yes, because if I don't, I'll get hit from my <laughs> inside here. So. Yeah. yeah, I think it's a worthwhile. Yeah. I, think, I think one of the big things is going to be trying to figure out who's going to manage the process after that point. So hopefully the, the group will do that, because it takes, it takes some management to run these. So. And I think so that the that CVB would be picking up that responsibility, and they would not the city. They will take the, the lead. City. Okay. I'm happy to say the 2000 if the CVB that. takes it over. So, Mayor, Mayor, I can add to that. As a representative of the CVB, it has been brought up as a discussion item. It would just be another tool in the toolbox um, for conventions and groups coming to Oshkosh. It's probably going to be more of a self-guided tour than it would be more of someone taking them around. It'll be a That's a possibility. I know that the uh, Winneville County Ar Archaeological and Historical Society is willing to donate some money towards this program, but apparently that was turned down by the city. And um, no. so I'm not you know, aware of a request. Well, I was approached by a, 
the chair of that committee and they were going to pay for the whole thing and then it got said we don't need their money so a little disappointed to hear that I support this and I agree it's good use of the uh, room tax dollars because it could generate um, again another tool in our toolbox to bring citizens to Oshkosh to stay at our hotels in that but um, I think we should never look the other way when organizations want to just like inclusive park want to help the city to bring something forward that we turn it down but um, either way I support it I think it's a good way to go yeah. if you the contrary. Later on, I'd look into that because I'm not aware of anybody turning something down but thank you for letting and me know. we can do that out outside the meeting yeah please yeah thank you any other comments I guess and you do have the authority to do that so unless somebody has a comment in opposition to that we'll assume that that's going to happen the city manager will take care of it okay it takes us to kind of three items <coughs> I'm going to hit one two three is oh no I'm, my terms coming to an to an end up here as I come to an end up here trying to trying to look ahead based on some experiences I've had in the past and so there are three things here I want, want to touch base on and one actually has a couple of sub parts to it so I'll mention them now there may be a couple of more before I'm gone in April um, gone from the podium but gone <laughs> <laughs> yeah, careful I use that term <laughs> <laughs> okay the first one's a, a recruitment for replacement of a, of a council member um, as we know we had the primary let's congratulate Mr. Cummings and Ms. Pansky coming out of the primary they'll be running for election on the first Tuesday in April uh, both these individuals uh, were elected last year to council which means that one of them and one of them is going to be elected this year so there will be a vacancy on the council uh, we have a process where the council is re we actually have a the council is actually responsible will be responsible for replacing one of these two people on the council uh, what we've done in the past is put together a process the process might take 30 40 days or whatever to put together the process agree and then notify people but what I think since we know this is going to happen ahead of time what I'm suggesting here and I've, uh, I, I've talked to uh, the city manager about this is that uh, what would happen is that uh, uh, Lawrence would put together a proposed process uh, for electing that for selecting that person would get the process started would get the process started ahead of time I think there's a, a one-page process before um, and uh, maybe at the next council meeting would present that process uh, to the council and so therefore we could begin to kick that process off with the hope that a council member could be selected at the uh, at the first council meeting no later than the second council meeting when the, when the new council meets so we don't have to have six people on the council before it's taken us a little while to get done so um, hopefully that that will get done something's being passed around now but I don't this think was we're a, ready it, to talk it's about a it smaller now. one this is uh, the procedure to fill council vacancies this is the section of the code uh, that refers to this and uh, the city attorney and I talked in addition to bringing this up at the next meeting it may be appropriate to tweak our ordinance just a bit just to clarify what we're doing we're being more proactive than we ever have before and if you look at this you'll notice that I, I added the it was adopted through ordinance 09179 on May 12th of 09 and it was after a council vacancy was filled and the, the, the observation was well we need to give time for the council to uh, open up recruitment for that and that's why the 30 days is in there but I don't think we necessarily anticipated being a little more proactive because one of the concerns that was expressed by council in subsequent years was that uh, the mayor cannot make appointments to boards and committees because we don't have the sixth or the the sixth council seat fit filled so uh, the idea would be to, to move that up uh, it may be appropriate if you take a look at the the I'm just gonna read the first sentence it says pursuant to the terms and conditions of section 1723 statutes in the event of a vacancy on the council the clerk shall it says within 14 days of a vacancy I think all we need to do is say or anticipated vacancy given the fact that the numbers strongly suggest that we're going to have a vacancy after the mayoral election it just makes sense that we can start the recruitment now so uh, the city attorney and I think maybe what we want to do is just insert that little change that we can start the recruitment without anybody questioning it we wouldn't want somebody to misinterpret it um, we had done that last time and we as we looked at it this this go around we can have council adopted on first reading 
and then start the 30 days on May or immediately after uh, March 10th after the ordinance gets adopted you give plenty of time until the election we'd have a full 30 days for council to recruit and then uh, once we decide which seat shifts uh, we know we're gonna have an empty seat regardless of the outcome so then you you'll have that 30 days people can express an interest it'll be after the election but before you're seated you'll have people to choose from at that point so if that's something you'd like to do uh -huh. that, yep. that's, yes we would just reasonable tweet so yep. we'll get a full council and thereby the new mayor whoever it is can make the appointments plus you'll have seven people on the council as soon as possible which which I think is important okay so for people watching out there there will be probably some notice uh, uh, at some point a few weeks down down the way of a, of a vacancy which will be out there so people are maybe we, thinking yes. about wanting to, to be appointed mayor yes it was this um, procedure was adopted through an ordinance does that have to come back to council if you're making changes in the ordinance yeah that's what yeah. he said so then it's two readings so what I suggest is we waive the first wave. reading at the next meeting so that we can start the 30-day recruitment process immediately after adoption and then that would give you the 30 days then it would be around April 12th your council meeting that is will be April 14th uh, so you'll have plenty of time from then and the new council won't even be seated then so you'll actually the, the recruitment process will have closed and the new council when it gets seated will have all the applications in front of them and reasonable same yeah. reasonable yeah. Sounds good. okay I think we got, got an action to move forward with there <coughs> the next thing has to do with a tech act upgrade and we talk about this on, on two levels uh, <coughs> one is the council chamber really hasn't been remodeled or new technology in over 20 years as you can see from these TVs you might see some of these in old hotel rooms or something <laughs> like that um, and also a lot of the of the uh, uh, things that, that Andy has back there is, is kind of out-of-date technology back there so I think we need we're gonna need some new technology in fact the city manager in doing it has also put aside so some money to to look for new technology here um, for a variety of reasons one this is outdated the other is if we have new technology we think that some things can be done that will be make it easier for citizens that are here in the council chamber and on TV to follow the agendas we can do some things like scrolling and other things so we'd like to look into to new technology and so uh, at the same time we're doing that uh, we thought it might be wise to take a look at some renovation in the council chamber because it may be changing the, the placement of the technology maybe have a very large screen up front I'm not sure what it'll look like and so what what I'd like to propose here if it's okay with the council is I would appoint a committee which would which would talk about the technology and also looking at making some some council updates here in the council chamber this is called the council chamber so I think it's up to the council to play a rather large role in, in what changes might be made in the way of innovation so what I'd like to do if it's okay with the council is is a appoint a, a subcommittee of council members to work with staff in talking about renovation and maybe have a report back like the first or second week in May to the rest of council um, in doing so I would probably uh, appoint Mr. Cummings and Ms. Paskey since I think the mayor ought to be on it one of you two is going to be the mayor and ask for a volunteer for a third member that would work with staff looking at renovation and the technology in here um, over a, and then come back with with a report which in working with staff by the first week in May does that make sense to people yep. you okay mr. Cummings That's fine you okay mr. Pansky yep anybody else like to volunteer for that committee who's gonna be here afterwards so you and I are out of the, out of the yep. picture <laughs> let me look at my schedule for the next couple of weeks and I'll get back to you okay why, why don't you look at it because it might mean some meetings during the day since we're meeting with staff if not we can yep, we can add to that so at least we have two members we'll look mr. Peck will look see if that can work if not uh, uh, we'll we'll figure out what we're gonna do or maybe it'll only be two members or but there is a retired Alice and Osby or mr. Volunteered for so Herman may want to be <laughs> coming <laughs> I okay I think th these are things that are needed what do we decide 1995 was uh, that was the last time we had it in the TVs and I think these were old TVs then when they put mm -hmm. them up. But Andy, can oh, you yeah. get a shot of the TVs? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a little weird. Uh, the uh, the technology behind us, uh, behind Andy, is uh, is really getting outdated. Uh, support for it is dropping. Um, you know, the TVs uh, 
in terms of what the technology is now. You saw Mr. DeShane's presentation. You know, we need to do something with that. But uh, as the mayor said, this is called the council chambers for a reason. But instead of us just putting something in here on some Tuesday and you say, where did this come from? I really think it would help if we had council input on this. Uh, and if it means that we're not going to be doing it again for another 20 years, I think we want to make sure that it's going to have some, some <coughs> lasting power to it. Uh, and then if I could, Mr. Mayor, the tech upgrade was really to um, kind of pitch to council um, some new technology. I, you want know. To, I wanted to go into that. After okay. I finish I'm this, sorry. I wanted to do the council chamber and then, then okay. talk about I'm that sorry. also. Okay. So we we got at least two-thirds of the committee settled. We're going to move forward with that. We'll get done fairly early. It'd be nice to have that done over the summer. The second part of the technology has to do with the little notebooks that a couple of people are using. Uh, city manager uses, Mr. Herman uses. The technology that backs those up is no longer going to be supported, so we have to do something else. The other thing is is that the, uh, the cost of these producing this paper is rather expensive, both in terms of human time and in terms of paper. So what I'd like to suggest and began to, uh, begun to look into is basically advocating that, that we go to tablet, a tablet form for all council members and basically require all council members to use it under, under the new council. And one thing, I, Mr. Herman and, and Mr. Roloff to get together with, with Tony and, and look at some possibilities of kinds of tablets with various kinds of criteria attached to them. One obviously being cost, um, a second being readability, it has to do with resolution and, and size. Another has to do with capability. Uh, I think the mayor ha needs certain capabilities up here as, as he or she uh, prepares for the meeting and, and works through the meetings and council members do the same. So that's the reason I wanted Mr. Herman and myself take a look at kinds of capabilities. And we reviewed a number of different kinds of tablets that were out there. We basically identified one that we think is good that will be very easy to use. It's, it's a touch screen tablet. It's a larger tablet screen than is what there. Very high resolution. It has the capability to make notes and then just you can make notes ahead of time and then just touch something on the screen and the note will pop up when you get to a particular item. It'll be noted where the note is. Uh, you'll be able to go to resolutions with just the touch on the screen. I, it'll be very easy even for, for folks that aren't quite as up to date technologically and, and all of those kinds of things. Uh, Principal reasons, again, for doing it. Again, I think it makes us a little more modern here. It's going to save us some money. The payback, I asked what the payback would be. The payback will probably be about six months, what's been estimated, easily within a year. Um, so we looked at a variety of, of, of different tablets, and there's one that appears to be, to be good out there. Uh, readability is very good. Capability is, 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 is excellent in them. Um, did you bring one tonight? I did. I'm, I'm actually using it tonight. Um, it's a lot easier than the old one because there was a lot of uh, mechanics <laughs> to move it and whatnot. But it does have the, the note-taking capability, which you didn't have on the previous one. So literally, the notes that I normally make on a piece of paper, I've been able to follow pretty easily tonight. Um, it also navigates very well from one agenda item to the next. If you've got anyone in particular, you can bookmark it yourself. There's a lot of good capabilities with it. Um, Mr. Uh, Newman is very excited about the possibility of council uh, getting on board with us. He is offered to do whatever training is necessary to get you up to the advanced beginner level. Uh, after that, it's probably up to you, and I would suggest you get your kids or grandkids to show you how to use it. Mm -hmm. um, or we could go to the senior center. <laughs> you could <laughs> go to the senior center. of the uh, mentoring program there. But the idea here is uh, it would be, an, uh, be a tablet, and it uh, props up real well. And uh, Mr. Newman has also identified a keyboard that you could also use, uh, if necessary, to follow it as well. So we can do that. Um, the resolution is is outstanding compared to what... Mr. Oh, Herman yeah. and I have been wrestling with uh, over with the netbook and because the netbook was it's not getting supported anymore the software is and so I broke the news to Mr. Herman and he didn't shed a tear not uh, once <laughs> so uh, so it's something I'd, I really think it'd be worth council taking a look at um, and happy to show you uh, do a demo with you at any time uh, to show you what it's like I'm also going to break the news to the department heads that aren't here uh, tomorrow morning because the, the cost um, of it putting together as a mayor said so it's pretty high and we would have a 
fallback position for you know problems, technological problems, which happen. Uh, Mr. Newman and I have talked about how we would handle those right. so that we didn't have any. Um, we weren't stuck at six o'clock on a Tuesday night, and nobody has anything in front of them, which I know is the city attorney's biggest fear. Um, so she's a paperwork fiend, so she she knows that. But um, uh, I think we can train everybody very easily, um, and you'll see that this is it'll help you keep notes for forever with uh, with this technology. Couple couple yeah, things, Mayor. Yep, go ahead. Just for council members, I load the agenda on Friday night as a document so if the cra system crashed over the weekend let's just say you'd have it saved already your council agendas because you would have that on your as a document as a word document second um, uh, you'll be able to use it as your city email so you wouldn't have to use your personal computers and things at home to get council emails or other things like that so there's there's a lot of advantage to it and with um, the technologist Mr. Roloff said it, it it's you know, I, I'm a kind of a, I'm not a non-computer person. I get around with it. So I, if I can do it, I think the rest of us can get up to speed. Mr. Newman said he would be more than happy to, as he said, do some uh, tutorials uh, for the council, outside of council meetings. So, um, you know, if we wanted to come in and like a workshop, almost like uh, before council meetings. And there would be backups. Um, other things, when there's been documents where I actually want paper, um, I then just ask the city manager's um, assistant to to make copies for me and I'll pick them up so um, you can still get hard copies on certain resolutions and things that if you really think you want that so um, I, I think we have the best of both worlds this way and it's it's roughly um, I talked to um, the girl that does our binders for a calendar year it's about fifty five hundred dollars in paper because think about all the different times we get a resolution like tonight we have an ordinance that she printed out for us we had the whole ordinance. Two weeks from now, we're going to get it all back again. She doesn't pull that out of the binder. She's got to reprint that. So, you know, I mentioned it in the fall during the budget session that we need to look at all our different small things as ways to save some money in our budget. And this is a way to save some money in our budget is to go paperless. I think it'll save some money and it'll be very useful. So, um, let's say. We've looked at technologies. There's one, unless people have, have heartburn over it. It's over there tonight. You can look at it. You could call uh, Mr. Newman and go in and visit him if you want to look it over over the next two weeks. Uh, again, we talked about backup systems, number one, and also training, which are which are both important Huge. to have. I think <clears throat> the training will be minimal with the ease of use. Uh, what I'm going to ask, if it's okay with the council, is to have it put on the agenda for next time, both the purchase purchase number one and number two basically requiring the council members utilize the, the technology when the new council comes into being so there'll be time to be prepared by by that time so is that okay if we put that on the agenda you have two weeks to think about it to ask all the questions that you may want to ask Ms. Pansky. just in the meantime then address questions to mark and and tony and yep about about the technology yeah okay. sure you can take a look go over and take a look at it tonight you can ask mark and i'll probably ask tony no i'm just kidding <laughs> well, have, i mean have you thought ahead to is a council member going to be assigned for the the one tablet per their term yeah, are that's they all it is now. Are they currently. are they insured? I mean, yeah, by I, the city they're insured. They're by all the insured, okay. um, and uh, Tony's got it all. Okay. That those, those city owned property. I have, I have two kids. I, you know, it would be might, city owned property. They might like this more than. <laughs> than <laughs> yeah, they can use it. <laughs> but essentially, it sounds like the decision has already been made. Oh, no, I think it's up to the council. What we're trying to do is do all the groundwork. We'd like to see it done, uh, but. But the essentially, the, the council decisions. says no. <clears throat> but I mean, yeah. based on the conversation tonight, it appears yeah. as if it, this is already a, has already been decided. So, it's up to ultimately up to all the groundwork has been been laid out there. Sure. My understanding is that I'm put this on next agenda for council to approve. Yeah. And any checking people want to do or any questions at that time, it can be put off after that if there are concerns about it at that particular point in time. Okay. Um, Takes us back to citizen statements to the council. With respect to citizen statements to council, again, another opportunity to come up and indicate something that you're happy with in the city or unhappy with in the, the city. Please feel free to come up to the microphone. Give us a, uh, your name and address. Limit your comments to no more than five minutes. No electioneering. Speak directly to the council and don't speak to anything that's already been discussed on the business part of the agenda. See no one 
coming forward. She wants <coughs> the city manager for announcements and statements. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, in your agenda packet, there's a memo from Mr. Maurer regarding aquatic plant management and maintenance services. This is something that we've entered into the last couple of years, and fortunately, we have not had to use it. Uh, but we re up that contract. Uh, if we do have weed problems uh, in Miller's Bay primarily, uh, we'll use this firm to, um, uh, to remove the weeds. Uh, but again, as I said, fortunately, we haven't had that problem in recent years. Um, the other thing I didn't hit put in there, but just want to plug State of the City is Monday, March 23rd, a uh, month from yesterday. So uh, put on your calendar. Doors open at 6, and uh, uh, State of the City address starts at 6.30. Thanks to all the council for their participation. You'll be amazed at the editing powers <laughs> of our OCMS staff. You're going to look wonderful when all is said and done. So thank you for your cooperation. I know varying degrees of interest in this, but appreciate that. And Mr. Peck sounds like he has a commercial message. Mr. Well, Cummings. You, you want to take this one? or Absolutely not. I'll let you go with it you as well. We both have the card out. You, you want to hold up I'll, the card? I'll hold the card. Um, starting Saturday at the Oshkosh Public Museum, The Art of the Brick, which is uh, some rather interesting Lego creations. Uh, Ms. Pansky mentioned her children. I know children are very interested in Legos. Adults too. Yeah, adults too. <laughs> well, we're all kids. <laughs> Some of us are bigger kids than others. <laughs> no comments. Um, so uh, starts this weekend at the Oshkosh Public Museum, and running one, through one, June 14th. One other thing, while this is at the museum, the museum will be open every Wednesday until 7 o'clock. And they'll have uh, staff from the library at the museum doing uh, activities for children and Mayor, big adults. One, one question back on that aquatic plant management. Um, I, I received a couple phone calls over the years about the 24th Street boat landing, having issues with aquatic plants and things. Would this agreement, I know it's primarily Minami Park, but would we be able to do something in the 24th Street boat landing if there were issues there too off of this agreement? Yep, if you take a look at the background portion of the memo, um, 24th Avenue boat launch is included okay, as one of the areas it. that we do um, keep an eye on. Okay, I'm sorry I missed that. Thank you. Okay, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second? Sounds fine. Second. Moved and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. We're adjourned.